Hello! Welcome, Welcome to, to Tango at, at home. home. How are you, everyone? We hope that you had a great weekend and we hope that you had a really good start of this week. This class is sponsored by Enterschooler. Thank you very much for your support. We really appreciate it. And this class is about terms. So we will give tips how to lead a term and how to follow a term. And many of these tips you already know, maybe, but we wanted to remind you a little bit what we used to work in the terms and so you have something to continue practice so the terms will be really good when we're coming back and dancing together again. So, let's see. Have fun! Today we're going to speak about a turn. How should we lead a turn and how should we follow a turn? Uh, in this case, to lead a turn, we need to really connect the embrace with the center. Because normally we say like, okay, you have to use your chest and you have to use your upper body to start to show the direction to the follower to understand where she will go, okay? So, but when we are into the embrace, in this case is in the open embrace, we have the chest in connection with the embrace. So, I know that to go into a turn, she has to go in this case back with her left leg. How do I do that? I need to start to turn to show the direction, but while I'm turning my chest, I will create a traction with my left arm, the open side of the embrace, pulling towards me. So the embrace is connecting with the direction of my center. So then she will understand where she will go by keeping this energy towards that direction. Like this, I hold the energy and I can show her all the time where she's going. Boom, 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 boom. Something that could happen in this case as a leader is that, okay, I know that she won't go into that direction. I, would, I know that she won't turn into this way. I will start to use the closer side of the embrace, pushing her around. And the problem with this is like we are going to, to push her out of access. Of course, she will understand where she's going, but we don't have to do the work for her. We have to show the direction where she will go and then she has to understand. We give time to the follower to understand where she has to go, right? What I feel from Juanpe, already when I embrace him, before we do a turn, is actually this tra traction that we worked in the beginning. So I feel that Juanpe's center is going forward and I will try to copy that at the same time as the embrace and the hand is working back to us. So we're doing this work. And after I feel that work, he can give me a direction. So he's giving me a circle of direction in that direction. And because I already have taken that lead, it's really easy for me to start to move my legs in the direction that I feel. What happens if we took, take this away is that I will feel that he starts to turn, but I will not really understand what he wants with this turn. What direction, what timing, or what I have to move. Uh, so it's really important that first we have this connection in the upper part with the traction, then I understand, okay, now I need to move my leg in that direction where I feel the clump is turning. It will also help me with the traction to fix my upper part and to go with my lower part. So what you can see is that I create the embrace and then we, I don't continue move the embrace. I continue move my lower part in the direction where I need to go, back, side, forward. This this traction that we are talking about is something that in this case to show you what is going, how what is happening is that we are moving really this quite big. Mm. But normally it's not that big, it's a small, it's according of how much energy you want to put into the turn. Which in this case, as a normal turn, maybe in double beat, you don't need to put that much energy. But for you to show you, yes, we are telling what you're doing, like my center is going forward, the energy is going back, and you can see like a lot of traction. If you are overusing this like with extra energy then the follower will feel or the no sorry the leader will feel like I really need to pull a lot to just make you do a half turn and it's too much something that we have to balance and feel how much energy we have to use to do this uh, another point when we are when we already have the connection with the embrace with the upper body we need to focus and we need to think in the shoo 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 abejita shoo <laughs> Another point that we have to think about in the moments when we have this connection between the embrace and the center, we have to think in our access. Something that we focus as a leader is that we will never go in the direction where she's going. What does that mean? If we start the turn, we have this connection. Da -da -da -da. I know that she wouldn't go there. Normally what's happened is like I try to go with her. 
right? My intention is with her all the time. Like I'm passing the energy and then she's following me, which is right, it's correct, because we want to go there. But I will give you another, another idea of the term that, that, that maybe will help you to, to understand, ah, I will try in this way and we'll see what's going on, what's happened. So, we will try to go in an opposite direction. When I'm thinking into the turn, I will focus on my back and the energy on my back and I will try to create, I imagine, a line there between my back. While I'm pulling the energy back, the follower is going there, but my back energy is going back and around. It will look a little bit more like this. Here, I have the connection here. Then my back is pulling a little back and around. Then all the time I have the energy towards this direction and she's going there, but I never go with her. Then we lose the focus of where is the access or who is the access, me or her. So we don't understand in that way. But if we focus a little bit more in this energy back, then it will be more complete and then it's more firm as a leader, right? You want to say something about it? Yeah, no, it's really nice what you're saying. Okay, so when we have already these things clear a little bit more so now we will apply into a structure which is going to be this Here. We will start an impulse of turn, we will go into a sakara, then we have an um, enrosque, and after the enrosque, we will combine that enrosque with a lapis to do a freno. Okay, so how we are thinking to do that as a leader? As a leader, we will start with the side step here, boom. We will create a flexion to create the impulse, but instead of go right forward, I will connect my center first towards her and my center will draw this direction before I'm sending her towards the, the turn. So I will not go here. This could be um, an option, but I will try to use that space. And to use that, to use that space, I need to send her here. And from here, I will move my center to the side. And now I have the position right in the front of me to go forward into the sacada. Just because I was starting with the idea to go first, there, now here, side tap, now she's on my light line to do the sacada. Boom, here. Okay, that's the first idea as, as a leader to start to think about this impulse. So what I'm doing is trying to keep, of course, being in this square in front of him. If I start directly with a back ocho with the pivot that is going in this way, that is going directly around, he will lose the space and he will not have the, the space actually to do the impulse and the sakala. So what I will do is doing the side step to the right and when I feel that Kwampe is giving me the new direction, I'm going to turn my chest with him in that direction to understand that I'm going in this direction first, that this diagonal back to the left for me. One. Then I'm going to do a side step and here I will open a little bit my hip because I feel that Huamp is giving me this intention of pushing out my hip and then I'm going to take a front step that will happen in front of Huamp so it's easy for him to enter into the sacada. Now we have to continue with the turn because I already have the first part, the half turn and while she's going into the last step, her front step, I'm using a sacada. But after that I want to go, I want to continue with a and rosque and with a lapis. To do that, I need to use what we were talking about a little bit in the beginning, the connection between my embrace with my center. In which moment? So, we have the first part, we did like, side, we go, one, two, three. Here, while I'm transferring my weight forward, I will fix the position of my hips, but my center will turn a little bit more to show her where she has to continue. Right? And when she's going into the side step, I will pass my, my weight forward to cross my leg back and do the pivot. Wham. Now, in this moment, I can discharge my weight on my right leg, bend in the knees. Now, my center and my knee is in the same line to start the lapis. Here. When she's going in the front step, I will do a small pivot while I'm 
moving my free legs back. Tick. And now I'm ready to pull and do the freno. Okay. For now, we have the first point, which is the connection between the embrace and the center, right? That this will show her where she has to go. And the second point is the axis, how you are keeping the energy back while she's going around, which we are going to apply that point when we are doing the sacada to start the enrosque. So in this point, we are here, we have the sacada, and here the common uh, mistake is that we pass forward and we give all the energy towards her. And then, it's be, it, then it becomes really difficult to do the enrosque. But if I know that I want to do the enrosque, I have to apply this detail. Keeping the energy, pulling back while you are transferring to do the enrosque. All the time the energy back. And here you can start to do the enrosque and you don't feel that, she's, that you are falling forward. She's feeling that you are still grabbing her with the energy back. Then she has a clear direction where she has to go. Okay? Now you can continue with the freno, uh, with the lapis, and the freno. Boom. As a follower, we have many ways of doing a turn, uh, but two ways that we normally speak about, and it's the one when we're doing a turn and we don't displace our axis, we stay over the same spot and just turn around. And then we have the turn where I'm displacing my axis around the leader, so I'm moving my weight. Which one could be when you're doing this turn in close embrace or in open embrace? Exactly, or other types of turn, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, after we arrive in the sacada and where Juanpi is doing the enrosque and the lapis, I need to use the variant of turn that is displacing weight. Because I need to be the one that has the weight that is moving around him while he's staying over his axis. So what does this mean to move the weight? It means that every time that I'm going from one leg to the other in the turn, I need to push from my uh, standing leg that I had before, my weight to the other leg. Instead of just going in the same place, I'm actually going to transfer my weight back, transfer my weight to the side, transfer my weight forward. But this I will do, of course, in a circular mood. So I have the first step in a normal turn that is going behind. And when I step over that leg, I need to push my weight to the side to move the weight. And then I'm going to step forward. And instead of stepping under myself, that could be an option, I'm going to step further forward to move my weight forward. And this will apply in this moment. And we will do it after the sakara. So first here I need to arrive, so I'm facing Pompey with my hip and with my center with a short side step. And now it's coming the lapis where I will use this moving of my weight. So I will go back, side, forward, front dojo. Look the difference if I do, can we do the lapis from here one? Yes, of course. Uh, so look what happens if I'm not moving my weight. I will not turn around him and he will not have anything to hold on to when he's doing the turn. So here, uh, we'll start from here. I'm doing the back step, I'm pushing myself back, side, forward, to really get around Juanpi in a circle. Uh, this is a really important point when we work with lapises and rosques and when uh, the leader stays over one axis. In relation with the lead, Juan P was speaking about how he's making attraction with the embrace in this way and then that I get the information to go around. This is really important for me as a follower to take this lead and I will copy and do the same thing. So I will do this traction. I accelerate a little bit when I show so you can see what I'm doing. Because when he starts to use his axis going a little bit back what he was showing, I cannot as a follower follow his axis in the same direction because then I will follow over him. So when I feel that Juanpi is doing this traction and he moves his axis back, I need to respond in the same way to then have the possibility to do the turn around him. This will make our energies go away from each other a little bit to then create a turn in the same motion. Instead of Juan is going away from me and I follow him, then I will fall over him. And the same idea is that if Juan P is going with his axis over me and I cannot receive him, I go with him, I will feel that I'm falling back. So here followers are the really good trick. 
if you have a leader that is going over you, you need to be strong enough to receive that energy so you can support him. Because he's doing a difficult work when he's doing a turn in one axis. So I need to be the support if he's coming towards me while I'm doing the turn when I transfer the weight or if he's going back, in this case that is much easier for him to turn, I need to be the support behind when I'm doing the turn. So this is actually our work when we're doing the turn support front and back at the same time. Followers, we're going to do exercise with two different types of turns that we were speaking about. The first one is going to be, I will stay over my right and I will do a turn without displacing my axis. So I will stay here, I will cross behind as close as me as possible, so under my center, and this will be down. Then I will stretch, just turn around my axis, and then I will turn again to cross under my axis. And then I'm going back. So what you can see is that I do one, two, three, and I stay in the same spot, turning around. One more time, I start over the right and I cross behind with my left, down, up, stretch both legs, turn crossing under, down. This is the one turn. Now we will do the second turn. And this will be, I will also start over my right, but now when I'm crossing back, I'm going to move my weight back. I'm going to move my weight to the side and I'm going to move my weight forward and collect. So if you play something in the middle, a chair, a ball, a broom, uh, whatever, uh, your partner, you need to feel that you are moving around that spot instead of staying in the same spot. I would like to hear what you feel different between the two turns. What do you feel different with the turn when you don't displace and what do you feel different in the turn when you have to move your weight? Comment below. Thank you very much for watching the video. We hope that you had fun. Personally, I love to do turns. Turns with sacada, turns with enrosque, with lapis, with triple enrosque, with triple sacada, with everything. Yes, he really loved to do the turns and he practiced them a lot. Uh, but I actually like the turns as well. It's really fun and it's really nice to feel how we are a team and that how I can help the leader to walk around in the turn. It's, it's a nice, nice feeling. It's a nice feeling, it's a nice to, feeling to feel how you're moving your weight around and I can grab that and then we start to play with that. Teamwork. Teamwork. Good work. If you want to work the musicality in the turns, you have a new video is, that is coming out on Thursday from Rita and Panos. So check that video as well. We have on Sunday the Tango Fica Cafe at 4 p.m. with Panos and Rita and we have new games where you can play with us and you can uh, win uh, private classes. Yes. So join us please. Now if you like the video you can press the like button here, you can subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you know when the video is coming out. And for now this is everything for today and we really hope that you have a great week and see you next time. Ciao! Hello! <laughs> Thank you.